Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing with Vlogmas. I'm so sorry that I lost track with Vlogmas, guys. My life was in utter chaos for about a week and it just did not allow me to film Vlogmas. I did not want to film Vlogmas. I was feeling completely overwhelmed and I'm going to get to explaining why. If you guys follow me on Snapchat, some of you will already have gotten a prior brief description of the things that happened. Um, so if you guys want more behind the scenes action on my end for my life and just what I do, blah, 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 then make sure you come follow me on Snapchat so we can hang out there as well. So just to give you guys a rundown of what happened, a lot of you know that Sean went off to British Columbia recently. So after Sean left, things took a little bit of a turn and him leaving in itself was of course very stressful for me. I did not want him to leave and wasn't very happy that he was going, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. So um, that in itself felt stressful for me. However, the day he left that evening, um, I came home and Oscar was just quivering in pain. Like literally his whole body was just trembling. It was so awful. And he was just screaming like someone had stabbed him multiple times. I've never heard an animal scream that way and it was absolutely gut-wrenching. So I had ended up taking Oscar to the animal hospital. Sean and I actually the night before he left had already been to the animal hospital the night prior with him because he had some other stuff going on. Um, I'm not sure why he's got so much so many issues as of this point. It was absolutely heartbreaking. He couldn't walk. He would just scream in pain and he's not a dog like that. Like he's never had any problems. Although you guys know that he was getting ready for a surgery on his eye. Um, that we were doing for him shortly. However, we had to cancel that because poor little guy had thrown his back out or slipped a disc or something to that effect and uh, just couldn't walk. His legs would give out under him when he tried or he'd face plant while trying to like walk and was just screaming on top of that. So I had to take him to the vet multiple times to get different prescriptions filled because the doses that they were putting him on weren't high enough. I couldn't get him outside with having to carry him and as you guys know I have two dogs so that's very challenging um, and I have to take them out together because they both get separation anxiety when they're apart and the meds that the dog has been put on are required every um, like the way that they're timed out only gave me a gap of about a two to three hour sleeping window at a time So I was feeling pretty tired on top of that and then roll that into my regular day-to-day -day with clients and everything else I was just a bit of a zombie. So in addition to poor Oscar, which thankfully he is like, okay His meds that he's on are helping him. He's incredibly slow moving and I have to make sure he doesn't move a whole lot but he is a thousand times better than obviously him screaming and being in a lot of pain. Uh, the second one was that after Sean left, a few days later, so after I was dealing with the stuff with Oscar, a couple days later, I got a call and text from him that the condo building that he was staying in just burst into flames and he was basically homeless. And the way he told me was by texting me this picture of his condo engulfed in fire. It was unbelievable. Sean had told me that he was sitting in his condo with another gentleman that's out there with him. And all of a sudden they both could smell smoke. So Sean started looking around the apartment. They thought maybe they left a burner on or like maybe an electrical wire was burning something um, and couldn't find anything. So he happened to go out to his balcony where he could smell like the dominant part of the smoke. And when he opened the balcony door, he could see that the neighbor right beside him, the entire condo balcony was just in mass flames, like not small, like just unbelievable huge flames. So he immediately ran out of his condo to the hallway and started banging on the neighbor's door to try and get them out and make sure that nobody was in there. But nobody answered. So he ran down the hallway and pulled the fire alarm right away because the fire was just ridiculous and got the hell out of that condo building, which thank God. So anyway, he took a, a picture or a text like after um, calling the fire department and having pulled the alarm and was curbside and um, away from the building. So the pictures that he took were a little intense. I'll um, include some of them here in the video just so you guys can have a peek at what he had sent me. He probably saved a lot of people's lives because they were on the top floor of their condo and no one probably would have known about the smoke or the fire until it was much later. 
So I, I'm glad that he was there to pull that and that he got out safe, as did everybody else in the building, thank God, including the pets, which is wonderful. That itself was stressful, but right after Sean had texted me those pictures and briefly described like what was happening, his phone died. And because everything was in his condo, everything, like everything that he brought with him, was lost in the fire so we had no way of connecting with one another because his phone was dead he didn't have a place to say he only had the clothing on his back so i was pretty concerned about him and it was probably about eight hours afterwards that i finally heard from him because they had to walk like 20 minutes to find a hotel and then they had to get situated had to get a hold of their boss to let them know what happened and then they had to go to some town meetings for those condo buildings to find out like what was happening so the story was all over the news um, for the fire that had happened so I'll put the link to that down below in case any of you want to read a little bit more about it and even for me to hear about it I just felt completely overwhelmed both with happiness that Sean was safe and stress and disbelief that the whole thing took place anyway needless to say I just needed to take a break from vlogmas it was just too much over those like couple days week I guess that it's been and by the time everything sort of calmed down I still needed another day or two just to chill out because I felt like I'd been on edge for the past little while so happy to say that things have returned to normal once more <laughs> but yeah I just did some laundry that was the timer that I set on my phone for that so I have to go get the laundry out and fold it which is not very exciting um, but I did just finish up with some clients I did a little bit of shopping earlier so I'm gonna do a mini haul for you guys from Saks Fifth Avenue and show you some of the pieces that I got there and yeah we'll see where the day takes us you guys, look at what my client got me. She's so sweet. She owns a bakery called Nothing Bunt Cakes. So they make little bunt cakes. And after I finished with her today, she's so sweet. She gave me this like, I think they're mini bunt cakes in here. I'm not sure, I haven't opened it yet, but how incredibly sweet is that? Oh my gosh, guys, look how cute are these? Oh my gosh, they're adorable. I apologize that some of these are topsy-turvy. I must have turned the box a bit funny. They're little like bunt cake cupcakes. How freaking cute is that? Oh, look, there's a red velvet, my fave, or at least that's what I think it is. I've never actually had a bunt cake before, but these, these look delicious. So good. I also went to Saks earlier in the week and picked up some goodies as well that I wanted to share with all of you guys. Um, I've untied it at the top already, sorry. Um, I actually went into Saks earlier because I was returning a Chloe Jane bag that I bought and was just... I don't know, having second thoughts about it just didn't really feel like it was fitting into my style. So I took it back and while I was there, I picked up a couple of other things that I really wanted to share with you guys. So the first of the products are um, some lipsticks that I wanted to pick up by, by Terry. And I've just really been become really enchanted with this company. It wasn't something that I believe has been in Canada for a very long time. I picked up three uh, click lipsticks is what they're called in case you guys haven't heard of by Terry before So they look like this um, it looks has like a little click on the end and then at the front It's got like a little thin applicator As you guys can see there um, Which is nice like it's like a little teardrop shape, but it really gets into your lip shape really beautifully and The lipstick itself is incredibly hydrating but it is long wearing as well, which is really quite lovely. So I got numbers 5, 6, and 15. So number 5 is this color here. It's sort of like a coral pink. Um, it's absolutely stunning though. I really wanted something that's sort of like springy color-wise. Then we have number 6, which is just a deeper set pink. It's also... Um, a little bit more neutral than number five was, but again, stunning color, I really love it. And this is to me like a good everyday like pink lipstick. It's not too bright, not too dark, it's absolutely stunning. And then number 16 is this beautiful like fire engine red almost. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a warmer undertone than most lipsticks. Like a lot of lipsticks have more of a blue base to them. So here are the colors, five, six, and 16 they're absolutely beautiful this is one swipe from each of them so you can see they are really pigmented I absolutely love these now I also picked up one other product from by Terry it's another lip product 
Um, this I have never tried, but this is called the Hydra Balm Fill and Plump Lipstick. And what I loved about this was not only the color, but I also love the fact that it was a balm and that it was almost kind of sheer as well when I applied it on my hand. So I was really intrigued by this. I haven't heard anything about this product. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's got a really nice weight to it, which I love. It's sort of this like very, very like white gold packaging almost. And then here's the color that I picked out on the inside. It's absolutely stunning. Again, just like a nice, beautiful sort of coral color and then here it is next to number five so you can see it's definitely got a more sheer application this was me swiping it back and forth a few times but it's really really pretty and just something you would be easy to like throw on when you're at home or out for the day or whatever you want like it's just beautiful and creamy and buttery like I'm just I'm so looking forward to wearing that now I did tell you that while I was at Saks I was returning a bag but I also picked up a bag <laughs> so the bag that I bought is actually from a brand that's really been surprising me recently and it's from coach coach is a brand that I've actually bought two things from including this uh, over the past year which is surprising because I have not purchased anything from Coach probably in 15 years at least just because I really didn't like their brand, I didn't like their bags, I didn't like their clothing, I didn't like anything. I just felt it was a little too suburban if you will or just a little too plain Jane. I don't know, something about the the product itself was just a little dull to me. They recently have a new design team from what I understand and they've just been killing it recently. All their stuff's really beautiful that they've come out with. So what I ended up picking up from them was... Ah, how cute! So this is called the Swagger 15 bag, which I mean, it's so cute, I'm not gonna lie. I really wanted a cute little metallic bag to tote around, and the reason I ended up picking up this one was because when I go personal shopping with my clients, often I have like hordes and hordes of clothing over my hand, or I'm helping my clients with their shopping bags, or whatever the case may be, and most of my larger bags that I have, which is what I use on the day-to-day, are way too full of stuff, they're too heavy, they're cumbersome, they just get in the way, and I wanted something to simplify what I was going to bring on the go with me. Two handles, so if you want, you could hold like this micro bag with just your hands, um, which is not why I bought it, but it's cute that I can use that as an option. It does fit my phone in here um, really nicely, there's no problem with it. Um, and it's got this beautiful zipper up top that I've just undone. But what I like about it so much is that it has a super, super, super long shoulder strap to it to make it either crossbody um, or just over the shoulder, which I think is adorable. So when it's on the crossbody, you can see like it hangs really nicely. Um, and I just love that it had like a little structure shape to it. I love that it's metallic. Gold is definitely my, um, my jewelry or my metallic that I should be wearing. It's, I just, I'm obsessed with gold anyway. It comes down nicely. I'm about 5'9", so it sits just nicely at my hip line, which is beautiful. And I love that um, in here, because there is quite a lot of room. I can fit my phone, I can fit my cards, I can fit my keys, my key clay. Uh, basically anything essential I want to bring around with me, like lipsticks or I don't know, I don't, whatever. Whatever I might want to bring with me while I'm in a store for a couple of hours with a client. It's something that I can use. It's seasonless, which I love. Um, and it's metallic, so it'll go with everything. It's just kind of like a, it's like a piece of jewelry <laughs> that you're using for a bag. That's it for today, guys. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the red subscribe button down below. And other than that, I love all of you and I'll see you tomorrow. See ya.